three main points to this talk. The first is that the vegan diet has some definite advantages, uh, but you need to pay attention to some nutrients. That's the second part. And the third is that once you get the patterns down, it becomes easy. Compared to regular meat eaters, vegans have three quarters to one third lower rates of blood pressure, one third the risk of type two diabetes, and significantly lower levels of cholesterol. The reason we know these things is due to cohort studies. These are studies where a large number of vegetarians and vegans, uh, along with other people following other types of diets, uh, are brought together and they're followed over time to see um, what differences there are between the health outcomes in the different groups. So now I'm gonna talk about the nutrient concerns of vegan diets. I have all the recommendations on this page on veganhealth.org. A vitamin B12 is the big one. Um, it's not found generally in plants. It's needed for healthy blood and healthy nerves. Uh, if you don't get B12 for a long period of time and become deficient, you become fatigued. There are uh, generally two forms on the market that you can buy a supplement for, cyanocobalamin and methocobalamin. And you want cyanocobalamin. It's been very well studied, and whereas methylcobalamin has not. We recommend 25 to 100 micrograms per day. That can be gotten in a supplement, uh, or 500 micrograms three times a week, or 1,000 micrograms twice a week. Those are common amounts that you'll find in a supplement. You can also get vitamin B12 from fortified foods. Calcium is the next nutrient that's important for vegans to pay attention to. Calcium is found in leafy, dark leafy green vegetables. Um, you need to consume a decent amount of them to meet your needs through leafy greens. So I often recommend calcium fortified beverages such as non-dairy milks and orange juice is often fortified with calcium. Um, and Tofu is made, most tofu is made with calcium salts. It'll be, you'll see the word calcium listed in the ingredients. And that's also very high in calcium. So I recommend aiming for at least um, two servings of these foods, which are the leafy greens or the fortified beverages each day or the tofu. Um, or if you don't do any of those things, you can take a 300 milligram calcium supplement. Don't just think, oh, I'm covered because leafy greens have it. There are some foods that are high in oxalate, that some leafy greens that are also high in calcium, but you can't absorb much calcium from leafy greens that are high in oxalate. You're not getting much calcium from them. Vitamin D can be a problem for anyone, whether they're vegan or meat eater. Uh, milk in the US is fortified with vitamin D, so you can get um, small amounts from, from fortified milk. The, the recommendations for vitamin D have gone up in recent years and it's, you're not likely to meet the RDA through just drinking a glass of cow's milk per day that's fortified. For example, in the summer, I might go out for 10 minutes in the sun before putting sunscreen on to get vitamin D. So here's the recommendation to, for sun if you are wanting to opt for that and uh, to expose a part of your body for uh, 10 to 15 minutes at a time. Iodine is something not many people think about. Some research has shown uh, populations of vegans to be on the lower end of iodine. Uh, I like to make sure that vegans are getting enough. And especially if you eat a lot of soy, um, soy can be uh, an iodine inhibitor. Salt sold in the grocery store in the United States to put on people's food is iodized. But if you do buy table salt and put it on your food and you're putting about a quarter teaspoon a day on it, that should cover you. Also, if you eat seaweed regularly, say three times a week, you're eating a serving of seaweed. Most seaweed also has iodine, so you probably don't need any iodine supplement. There are two types of omega-3s. There's short chain, which are found in numerous plant foods, uh, and there are long chain, which tend to be found in fish and seaweed. They are not found in large amounts in seaweed, but they do, uh, you can concentrate the seaweed and make vegan supplements of DHA and EPA out of seaweed. So vegans can get a direct source of EPA and DHA if they want it. Now, I don't think the research suggests that vegans need to supplement with DHA and EPA. I recommend that, that vegans make sure they're getting plenty of the short chain, which is also called ALA, alpha linolenic acid. These foods are the foods that are the highest in ALA, 
<clears throat> walnuts is a particular easy one to come by, and there's also flaxseed oil. The flax is very high in walnut, uh, very high in ALA, and chia seeds, a number of other foods. Canola oil, if you use oil to prepare food, canola oil is high in ALA. Vitamin A is, is fairly easy to get. Carrot juice is extremely high in vitamin A. A quarter cup of carrot juice is going to be enough. But these other foods are also excellent sources, butternut squash, sweet potatoes, pumpkin, carrots, and spinach, cantaloupe, and kale also have appreciable amounts of vitamin A. It's good to eat vitamin A uh, throughout the day. Iron is an interesting nutrient in that it's plentiful in a vegan diet, but some people have trouble absorbing enough plant iron. Plant iron is uh, higher to, uh, harder to absorb than some of the iron in meat, which is called heme iron. Iron is the most common nutrient deficiency in the United States, and um, it's not uncommon, so it's easy to get tested. Adding vitamin C at meals will significantly increase the amount of um, plant iron that's absorbed. If you have a problem, you should avoid the tea and coffee at meals. Um, you can also increase legumes, which are high in iron, and dark leafy greens are high in iron, and avoid calcium supplements with meals, which also inhibits iron absorption. Here are some foods that are particularly high in vitamin C. Um, orange and grapefruit juice are the highest. Oranges are high. Broccoli is actually surprisingly high. Strawberries. Zinc is something that is, uh, can be marginal for some vegans. Uh, vegan diets provide about the DRI, but zinc is a little bit harder to absorb from plant foods. Good sources of zinc are legumes, nuts, seeds, oatmeal, bread, tempeh, and miso. Um, and if necessary, you could take a supplement of about 10 milligrams for adults. Protein is something that a lot of people think you have to have meat or animal products for. I'm sure most of the people who have seen this talk know that you don't. Protein is found in a wide, well, protein is found in all plant foods. All the amino acids are found in all plant foods. There is one amino acid, lysine, that is considered the limiting amino acid in plant foods. However, it is found, it, there is plentiful amounts of lysine in these foods which legumes is a big one. It's in all sorts of beans, lentils, peas, which are both split or green. Um, soy foods have it, peanuts, seitan, quinoa is high in protein and high in lysine, pistachios and pumpkin seeds. Now, if you don't eat any of these foods um, each day multiple times, you could be low in lysine. That's not gonna happen to most people. People over 60 do not metabolize protein as well as younger people. And so, and they also will sometimes start eating less, just they won't be as hungry. And so you need to make sure that a higher percentage of your food is, is high protein if you're a vegan. So here's a, a rundown of my regimen. For B12, I take one half of a Trader Joe's uh, B50 tablet. Iodine, I order potassium iodide once every few months off of Amazon. It's pretty inexpensive. I take, I break a tablet in one thirds. Um, zinc, I take one quarter of a 25 milligram tablet. Uh, I seem to tend to do much better on zinc. A lot of vegans, that will not be necessary. For calcium, I put fortified non-dairy milk on my cereal in the morning, and I try to eat dark leafy greens at night with dinner. Um, try and succeed most of the time. For iron, I eat an orange with breakfast. I don't necessarily think I need iron. I've been tested before, and I've been fine, but I like to just throw an orange with uh, the, oat, the oats I eat in the morning. Vitamin D. Um, I get a lot of sun. I try not to get too much, but I do get a lot in the summer and the warmer months. And then in the winter, try to take a thousand I use of uh, vitamin D each day once the sun is no longer a, ha have the potential to burn me. Omega 3s, like I said, I eat walnuts on my cereal in the morning. Um, and vitamin A, I eat plenty of baby carrots, as well as the dark leafy greens.